Today, we're gonna be starting on window framing, door framing, we've got grade board because mostly our framing for this building is done. Our roof sheathing is about done, but if you're wondering why we're not finishing that, it's because our friends from LP will be coming out and shooting some content on site. Uh, and then the walls, we're gonna be having weather logic. So we're prepping for that today by getting our windows framed, doors framed, so we can start installing that sheathing, get this thing under wraps, because as you can tell, I've got a stocking cap on, I got my gloves on, it's getting colder, and we wanna get out of the uh, colder weather as quick as possible, even though unfortunately we'll still be working outside getting it sighted and stuff. So let's go ahead and get into it. Greg's just doing grade board right now using some of this foam sealer and uh, we actually ripped it down so that it was an inch and a half. Actually just a little smaller than an inch and a half and we're not too concerned about this. It's just gonna be a, a barrier between the concrete and this uh, white wood because we're actually gonna come back through and seal tape all of our sheathing down to the concrete with the Fentrum from Sega, which is pretty dang amazing. Uh, this is just gonna give us a nice little barrier, a little bit of air seal, uh, bugs, stuff like that. And then the fence room will be our real ticket for air sealing. Okay, so I'm framing in this walk door here. It's the front walk door. And what I wanna do is get my jams installed. What's gonna happen is the floor is gonna get poured through this opening and give us a nice cap. And that's what our door is gonna set on. What I need to do is figure out the exact elevation. Now, each one of these brackets were set to the laser elevation. This is a minus 3 16 this one's a minus 3 16 and what that means is that I cut 3 16 off of this column. So what that means is that this floor right here is 3 16 below this top or the bottom, I should say, of this post. And what I can do is I've got my laser set up and I can see my laser. You guys probably can't see it, but my laser is right here. So what I can do is measure down to this, hook it on my column. That's about 17 and 7 eighths. That is 17 7 eighths plus another 3 16 to be at zero. So I can take my jams and what I can do is from the bottom, I can mark 17 7 eighths plus 3 16 which is 18 and a 16 And now when I put them in the opening, get them plumbed, what I can do is find where the laser hits my exact mark. Now the bottom should be at finished floor and the top from one to the other, both jams, should be perfect. So I'll go ahead and get a screw started. Now I got my laser set up. I got my mark here. We're going to get it on our mark here and the laser is right there. So we're just going to lower it. Okay, so we're right on the laser and we are right on our mark here. I also want to seal tape the bottom just because it may come in contact with concrete, obviously. White wood is obviously not supposed to be right on the ground, so even though we're on a foundation wall, I suppose there could be moisture coming through the wall. So this will just protect it. On our laser, on our mark. All right, now that we got these placed, what we need to do is plumb them up so that they're perfectly plumb, which since we have the laser, we're gonna go ahead and use that here as well. There. Just for the heck of it, I always like to just double check. Here we're 38 and a quarter, and here I'm 38 and a quarter. So we know our rough opening is the width we want. The height is 82, I know that because I cut these to 82. And now I need a header board that's gonna kind of stiffen the top of this door. So all I like to do is just take my LDM and just shoot that it's seven foot seven and 11 sixteenths. We'll go ahead and cut that, put that in, and then that'll kind of define the box and then we gotta do all of our blocking. So now we got our board cut and we're just gonna set it up here like so. Probably a little bit snug. So with our laser still up, we can do here, is I can see it right here. There we go. Right there. Okay, now we have the, the actual box of the door framed. We're gonna add this header. 
and I call it a header loosely. It really doesn't have any structural strength, but it just kind of adds blocking around the top, ties in this top board to our post. So we just call it our header, but it's not really a header. So we want the bottom to be flush. And I do try to use screws on all the door and window framing, just so it pulls things together and keeps it nice and tight. These are also all structural screws, so I don't have to worry about them breaking, which I know a lot of people always comment on us using screws over nails. Um, these are all structural GRK framing screws, so don't worry guys, that's what they're made for. So now what we're gonna do is, we've got some blocks here, and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and install these. They're probably a little snug, is okay. So before we actually put on our grade board, if you guys remember when we did our foundation layout, we also put these marks here where the door goes through the opening so that we know where to put this because it might not be straight you could string a line but this was the easiest thing to ensure that it's perfect and what we're going to do is take this block we're going to go ahead we're going to put some tape on it because it's going to come in contact with our concrete so now we have this block and what we can do is we can line it up I would rather have my opening be slightly bigger than too small. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna line it up on our black line like so, and you can see this is off a little bit, that's okay. Make sure we like it. And that'll lock in our bottom and our grade board can also get nailed to this and it's not gonna go anywhere. So we'll do that on both sides. We've got our sheathing on for the most part and now we need to get it covered up. It's already been through a snow, a couple rains. And the only reason we did this sheathing is because mainly of this valley. We want to make sure we have a solid valley. So it is an added cost that we didn't have to do because we're using a um, a metal roof that you can screw through that we typically put on our buildings is structural, all that good stuff. But being a house, having a valley, I think it's the best way to go. But now we need to get it covered up and we've got an ice and water that we're gonna do in this valley. All right, Greg, let's get this rolled out. It's not gonna stick worth a crap, probably. probably I'm gonna get staplers, yeah. What I'm hoping, because right now, if I pull this off, it's like got no stick to it at all, but it basically is saying on the instructions that it needs to go through like a heat cycle. The sun needs to kind of hit it and uh, do its thing. So the same reason we're using this is why it's gonna be okay. It's, it's gonna self heal any potential yep. leaks. Yep, you're right. You gotta keep your eye on this plastic because if it starts ripping and you start pulling and not getting it all off, then you get problems. Okay. Hmm, it's actually, I think, starting to stick. The sun is, I think, doing its thing. So typically, when it's warm outside, you can use the broom to kind of get it to, uh, to kind of flex and go into those spots where it's a little bubbly but I don't think I'm gonna get to do that today. We're gonna let that sit there and we're gonna go ahead and try to run, uh, run one down on the eave. Okay, cool. Now just bend them over 
and then take your stapler. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll cut off this axe. That's tough. Yep, there you go. You know, it's probably upper 30s right now. Yeah, it's supposed to be. And it just doesn't adhere very good at cold conditions. I'm worried about the, the wind coming up through the cracks. I mean, at least this stuff is supposedly self-healing, right? So I'm not really sure what to expect. We've started laying out the ice and water. We're doing an ice and water on this roof in hopes of guaranteeing any potential leaks are caught because this being a house, having insulation, let's say a washer fails in 15 years, 10 years. I don't know, maybe the day after we put it up. I don't know, I've had that actually happen one time in the hundreds of roofs we've probably done. Right. We had a roof one time where 40% of all the screws failed. Now this is an exposed fastener roof, which means all those screws with those neoprene washers are potential leak points. Having an ice and water on this entire roof will help self seal all those penetrations that go through the roof deck and hopefully aid in keeping this roof dry for a long time. Now you wanna probably think about replacing these screws every 30 years, that's kinda the time frame that I've always been told. They do get better and better with time, new technology, better manufacturing. But still, if you're gonna go 30 years, replace the screw, um, the ice and water's goal is to help prolong the possibility of any major leaks that might develop. They're not gonna, that's the goal. Obviously, no one builds a house, puts a roof on with a leak in mind, but things happen. I hope that the uh, sun hits it, does its thing, and uh, gets it to maybe melt and adhere a little bit better to the OSB before we get any wind that comes up and tears it all off. And then we gotta do it again. That would suck. Yep, that time of year where we're gonna have to put our muck boots on because it's not quite frozen, but it's cold and snowy. So we've got our P3 True Work bibs on. They're very fitting, so they don't feel all bulky and hard to move around in, yet they're still extremely warm. Tuck everything in right here, keep it nice and tight so you can still get your belt on. The important thing for us, because we're out here in the middle kind of of nowhere with no real protection, they block the wind. So the bibs, and then you throw on your shell. And you're ready to go to work. So I really don't mind the snow if I'm gonna be able to go like snowmobiling or skiing, snowboarding, something like that. But when you're working, it just, it is better than rain. It's just kind of a nuisance, especially when it's still pseudo warm out because you develop just a slippery, nasty, mucky mud uh, that's covered in snow. So everything like sticks. And then, uh, you know, you just got this going on, which whatever. Uh, anyway, so what we're doing here is we've got the Stabila rotary here. And what we're gonna do is get this turned on. I'm gonna take my receiver here and we're gonna go over to this wall where we've already installed these windows. And the goal is we want the bottom of our window to be consistent. So we've got a double window that's going right here on this end wall. So I'm gonna take my receiver and uh, we're just gonna set this. Now when that receiver dings at us, based off of that rotary. So now that we've found the receiver, Greg's gonna keep moving that up. You can see the number going there. 7 8 13 16 11 16 7 16 3 8 5 16 boom so now that this receiver is set what we can do is come over here find our marks where this window is going to be set so that's what we're going to do so the problem that we have is that this girt is in our way it's right where this bottom of the window is and maybe some thoughtful foresight or looking into the future would have said, hey, why don't you move that girt then so you don't have to change it later? But the problem is we want a two foot on center spacing for all of our sheathing. So it had to be here. It just means that we got to move it a little bit for our windows. So now I just take my little uh, recip saw with a metal blade 
and I'm just gonna cut those 20 pennies that'll hold this gird in. So now with those cut, what I can do is just lower that to my marks I made so that this now becomes the header height of our window. Okay, so now our header has been lowered. We've got a double, double hung going here in the dead center. So we're just gonna go ahead and measure off our corner. So we're gonna mark 12 feet. And this should be 24, but because I'm probably anal, we're just gonna double check from both sides. It could be 24 and an eighth or, you know, I don't know exactly. So I come over this way, 12 feet, and it looks like we're maybe 12 and an eighth or 3 sixteenths. So now what I can do is I've done 12 both ways. I can just go in the center of that mark and I'm as close to center, obviously, as possible. Okay, so now that we have that center mark, we can bring our double window in here and we're just gonna line it right up with the center, flush with our header here that we just moved. It's the first time we've done this because typically we set our header height and then do everything down. But because we're trying to keep everything on the same, we've got Versetta stone, got kind of a bunch of lines that are important down at the bottom of the window, not the top. We're gonna go ahead and set these all. And then Greg, you got your level? Yeah, good, I like it. So now that we have the, the window plumb, now we can kind of finish all this framing. I like that. Then what I'm gonna do is just mark three and a half inches on the jam so we can put blocking to go around the window for the window install and the sheathing install. So now that we have those girts cut out, we've got this area where we just go ahead and we add more blocking. And this is how we're gonna be able to mount our sheathing around our opening and then have solid backing for our window install. Now a lot of people might look at this and think it's unconventional because you don't have a big header supporting it. And that's because you don't have any weight bearing down on this window. It's literally the window itself. So when we run our framing through, we get our sheathing, there'll be girts on the inside and the outside. That's all we need to do. Which is really nice because in stick framing, you might have a big two by 12 or two by 10 header that you have to worry about your insulation and the lack of insulation because you have a header. Whereas here, we don't have to worry about that. We just have our framing box and then we can have insulation all the way around this window. Now what we're gonna do here, because this is a double double hung, that's gonna be two independent windows. And this was actually Greg's idea. I like it. This is three and a half inches. So when we set this here, it'll make our window perfect for a piece of three and a half inch smart side trim to go right up the middle. And this has to be done anyway, so it just seemed like a great idea uh, that Greg had to just to space the windows exactly where we wanted them. All right guys, time for some weather logic sheathing. And if you haven't been following the channel or you don't really know what this is, why this is blue and what's so special about it, this is Weather Logic, and this is an integrated WRB panel. So what that means is that you've got your Structure One. So this is a Struck One sheathing panel, which means in the right nailing pattern and situation, this is a really strong panel. It's great for us because we're doing post frame, and it just gives us a lot of structure for the building. But the major benefit is this blue covering right here, and this is the integrated weather resistant barrier it's gonna be our air sealant from the outside and our water sealant. So water and air will not penetrate the panel, keeping our house dry, keeping the air quality high, and giving us the ability to control all that air quality on the inside with our HVAC system instead of letting your house breathe, which is not a good thing. We got some little miscellaneous blocking to finish up behind me for the porch uh, and around some of the windows we framed yesterday. Today, it's a lot colder, so 
We're gonna have to work hard to stay warm, but it means that we've got a nice solid ground to work on. So that's gonna be nice and we're gonna take advantage of it and try to get as much sheathing up as possible. So I know I'm gonna get this question and I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna answer it right away. We run our sheathing up and down because our girts are horizontal. In your typical stud frame wall, your studs are every 16 inches and you go perpendicular to those studs with your four by eight sheathing. This stuff is rated for a two foot span. So these girts are two foot on center, two by sixes, which allows us to get two nails on each girt, not just one nail, which is all you would get on a stud. I like running it this way. Maybe it's a little bit more work because you can't snap a four foot row, run the whole row, and then come back and set pieces on. But personally, I just think it's, it's quite easy to do this. We got the 21 degree from Metabo, but all we're looking to do is basically tack it in place. I've got my Stabilo laser right here, showing me where my plumb line is. Yeah, solid laser on the side. Cool. So we're using the nail to space get ourselves an eighth inch space and in all this sheathing. It's important for expansion, contraction. And we'll just go right through all these windows and doors and cut them out later. It's way easier than cutting and fitting. so much harder to deal with. Why are you doing when the fucking has it? I know. Right here? Sure, hit that and go up to the L. Yeah. Right here? Yeah, higher, right there, right there. Yep. Cool, one wall tacked up. That's easy, dude. Now, that goes up just like any other sheathing product. Doesn't matter if it's OSB, plywood, weather logic, zip. They all kind of install the same. You put them up, you nail them off. The benefit to a panel like this, the integrated WRB, is that you can tell, I'm assuming, how windy it is right now. If I wanted to cover this up and protect it from moisture or wind blowing into the building, I'd have to house wrap it, get some cover on it, right? That's miserable in the wind, and that never really works great because you have to put penetrations through the WRB that you're putting on. It's just not great. This, I literally taped those seams behind me, and it would be good. It would protect the interior from any weather from here on out. That simple. That's pretty cool. That is why I love this type of material, any integrated WRB panel. I especially like the weather logic because I, I think the blue looks amazing and this house is going to be blue. So it gives the customer a good idea what their building's gonna look like. Pretty nice, huh? Not too bad. All right, as we move here onto the end wall, my attempt is gonna to be to get a plumb laser line to the peak so I can verify where the dead center is, adjust it by two feet, and we're gonna start with a full sheet right up the middle, and that is so our ends the sheathing can be overlapped on our side sheathing because this is exactly 32 feet with a half inch either way. I'll be a half inch shy with my sheathing if I start with a piece right off center. I just don't know if this is going to be bright enough back here or not. We're gonna find out. Dead center up all these 
marks. So we're gonna go ahead and run with it. So we're gonna go ahead and mark two foot off this center. It's just always good to confirm that you are in fact plumb. And then this is where our sheet will start. So now I'll adjust my laser. Now that we have this wall done here, you can see why, I think you'll be able to see why we started the way we did on this gable in the middle with a full sheet split both ways. Is because I knew that this dimension was an even four foot dimension. So if we would have started with a, with a full right here, I would have been kind of off over there. And I always like to start in the middle where the tallest line is. So by starting directly in the middle, I get my tallest line, that's the easiest one to make straight, and then from there, I can work towards the corners with little chance of error. If I start on a corner, and I work my way up the gable and then down the gable, I could have some problems, and then when I get to the last sheet, it might be a little bit weird, I might have a little bit of a difference in measurement from the top to bottom. Normally that stuff doesn't matter, and it's not that it's a problem from a, uh, from the point of view of like the product working or not, it's just my OCD, I like things to be even. I like to be able to go up here, cut everything at the same dimension and it work. It's just me. So by starting in the middle with a four footer split both ways, I knew that when I got to my corner, this is actually 24 and a half inches. I actually cut it at 24 and three eighths because I did want it back just a little. I didn't want it overhanging, but I wanted this to be over top of this wall sheet here so that I can corner wrap this with tape and get a nice good seal. So. I really like it. All right, we're gonna try something here. <laughs> what? That was so easy. Dude, do you know how easy that is? Look how quickly it grabs it too. Plenty of suction power just like that. There's a really good chance that I'm totally overusing these things. They're just so much fun. And they're incredibly strong. I bet I could hang from something no problem. Now, whenever cutting pitches for gable ends, it's really quite easy as long as you know one dimension, as long as your sheathing is being installed plumb and, and level, um, then you should be able to use whatever the pitch of the truss is to know exactly what your cut is. Greg, you got a dimension for me? Okay, so my long point is 65 and a quarter. So we're just gonna reach out here. We're gonna go 65 and an eighth. We don't ever wanna to be too tight. Now this is a four foot sheet and I have a 612 pitch, which means every foot, I'm gonna go down six inches over four feet. I'll go down 24 inches. So at 65 and a quarter, I will now be 41 and a quarter, eight, because I wanna be a little bit smaller. Huh? I took an eighth off. Okay. Yep. See, Greg knows what's up. He was giving me the tight measurement. Um, and we got to space it. So we always got to make sure that we have the proper spacing. Then I can just take my track saw. Yeah, I could be snapping a line right now, maybe on an angle that's kind of hard to do by yourself unless so you got a little help from somebody or a little gizmo that kind of holds it on an angle. Uh, and then once you snap the line, you're going to get your saw and you're going to line it up and you're going to eyeball it across 
or you could just take your track saw. I want this set just over 15. I can't reach any further. And just like that, I should have, I need to go a little deeper. I was trying to save from going into these boards here, but this should be perfect for Greg. Hopefully it's good, huh? If not, it's probably a measurement thing. Well, there we go, I'd say that fit in there quite nicely. I would say maybe a little tight. I probably should have taken more than that eighth off because Greg gave me a tight measurement. I only took an eighth off for the nail and I should have went maybe three sixteenths to a quarter. So we'll do that again on the next one. Got it? Yep. Nice, I'm actually really surprised because it's not the end of the day and we have done more than I anticipated. I do wish we could have gotten this wall over here done before we worked our way through, but it is also nice locking in another section of this building. So, you know, each of these squares, when you get these corners locked in like this, we've got the sheathing on their roof. It's not going anywhere. And it really makes me feel good because now we don't have to keep checking it for plumb because it's not going to move now. Like once this sheathing is nailed off, we're golden. Um, and you know what? It hasn't even been that bad today. I'm rocking my True Work bibs, keeping my core warm. And I've just got a, uh, a long sleeve underneath, a t-shirt underneath that, and a hoodie. So sometimes the wind gets through me, but it's been pretty good. We got a lot done. We started here in the front. So this is the where the front porch is gonna be. Now remember, we went right through all of our windows and doors. So there will be, I think, four windows on this wall. Front door right here, you can kind of see that with the knockout in the concrete. And, um, and actually, so we got done with this wall. Then we came around the corner, and that's where the wind's gonna hit us, but hopefully the dead cat on my microphone works. This is the end wall, this is the north end wall. It's the biggest end wall, 32 foot wide, about 16, 17 foot to the peak. Not too tall, because it's only one story. And unfortunately, this wall over here we could not do. It was a little bit covered in ice, snow, from the weather we had, but we continued and went over to this wall here, which is the other north wall for the master suite wing, and finished up on this end wall. So we got two of the end walls done, two and a part side walls done. It's really nice, starting to take some shape. You can see right here, we're gonna have another porch at this post. It's gonna go all the way down here. There's a couple more windows here, a couple, or a tall window here. I think one more day and we'll get the sheathing on the walls. We got a little bit of work to do to finish up some roof sheathing. And then we'll be ready for our friends from LP to come out. They're going to do a little bit of install content. We got taping to do. So that way that wall, that wall there, that blue wall will be completely air and water sealed from all the elements. And the next thing obviously I need to do is I need to get some roof metal ordered. That way we can get ready for some steel, get this roof covered up. Windows are in. This is amazing because we don't have to wait for windows for once. And, uh, We'll be able to get these holes routed out. Windows installed. I act like it's gonna all happen in one day. It's not, it all takes time, but I'm excited because we're moving forward, starting to see some progress other than just framing. And uh, this is what we gotta do in order to get to finishes. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here for the day. I don't know yet if we're gonna, I don't know yet if we're gonna end this and just wrap it, uh, wrap this video or if we're gonna go into tomorrow. So I guess you'll know by whether or not there's an end screen credit right now and a nice little subscribe button in the corner that you can hit if you want to follow along with this channel. Always got a lot of construction content, tools, stuff like that. Otherwise, I think I'm gonna get out of here for my day anyway. We'll catch you later.